Uh, look at me. Like, I don't have a fucking care in the world. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing in this place? Hi, if you're feeling a bit lost right now or that you don't have your shit quote unquote together, I swear you are so not alone. This is me, a 20 something year old who jumps from career to career, having no business waking up in an overpriced New York City Airbnb because I'm quite frankly depressed, among other emotions, yet trying to keep a smile on my face. And most importantly, I don't have a place to call home right now. So I thought, why the fuck not dig for some crumbs of inspiration by staying a while in a place that I aspire to live in one day. And was it worth the bill? A thousand percent yes. At first it stung, believe me, but I decided to sacrifice a few other expenses to try something I used to view as too indulgent and I'm so glad I did it because this time here helped me retune my focus onto what I needed most in my life. Peace and quiet instead of constantly being distracted by noise. And yes, noise can be fun. It can be alluring, disguised as living life to the fullest but I think I got a little too much of it and need a hard reset to come back to myself But right before this lovely stay just 24 hours before I was finishing up my last night at my sublet feeling anxious as fuck So let's go back real quick Hey Alexa, play Billie Holiday This is Billie Holiday from Spotify It's like the best. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Is there Everybody is going people from California, people from New York. Like East LA. East LA. Hey Alexa, stop. The movers have left and the next mission is to return this place back to how I found it before the sublet owner comes back. I took pictures of everything, so. So I'm finally done cleaning for the most part and Celine is actually on her way here. We're gonna get some much needed TLC by getting massages. Before we dive in, let's get centered with three deep breaths. Inhaling and exhaling. Good morning. Oh my gosh, my voice is so sleepy right now. I think this morning I'm gonna go for a run outside. I feel like I just need to release some of this anger that I've been feeling and holding inside of my body.
something that I wanted to talk about today regarding friendships. Maybe it's because I'm seeing a very close and near and dear group of friends tonight. These past couple of months letting go of a lot of things, it included a lot of relationships that I felt the need to hold on to, which kept me feeling anxious a lot because I always felt like I wasn't giving enough of myself equally to everybody that I knew. One of the main things that helped me feeling more whole again was detaching from the idea of needing a million and two friendships. And of course, I think this stems from like a very people-pleasing type of mentality because I think a lot of us who grew up as immigrant children, people-pleasing was just kind of ingrained in us as a means of survival, you know, to be accepted by this foreign but not so foreign place. Never mind, not gonna go there. You do not need to give bits and pieces of yourself to everybody in order to feel worth something as a human. But at the end of the day, these close friends or friend is someone that you can find, you know, ease and comfort with, that you can simply say no to them. There's no need to over explain yourself. It's this level of understanding that both of you have cultivated for each other. It's just the most beautiful thing. You know, I don't feel like I'm split in so many ways that I've lost myself. That was kind of just a word vomit. Thank you for following along. There's this like little marketplace that I want to visit. I think it's only like a 10 minute walk from here. The other day, my friend Ariana also asked me if I wanted to get matching tattoos with her. Just like little tiny happy faces that are like one centimeter. But I don't know. We'll see how the timing is because we're going to do karaoke tonight. So fucking fun. Oh shit. I got to do my vocal warm-ups. We send each other voice notes of us doing vocal warm-ups before our karaoke sessions and it's just the funniest shit ever while we're getting ready. This is the outfit today. This juicy knitted sweater. This cool crocheting on it and white tank top underneath. And these lovely Levi's I found at Urban Outfitters, surprisingly. Nice. Mixed but look peachy. <laughs> made my dashi from scratch. I hope it turns out good. What they're gonna do is put all of the ingredients and like grind it up and then stash it into little bags for me so that I can make my soup whenever I want to. They said to come back in about 20 minutes, so I think I'm just gonna go for a walk. I also wanna read really bad. Look at these windows. This is like my dream to have like a loft apartment with like huge square windows like this. Huge, like taller than me. Well, I'm very short, so. Um, there's a person staring at me from across the street, so let me start walking. <laughs> I just picked up my dashi and I put my name on it and everything. I'm so excited to make stuff with this. Probably won't be able to make anything until I move. This was so nice to go out and do this for myself for fun. It feels so weird. <laughs> Little gift to myself. case for my kindle and i just really wanted to share the union of my kindle and its case because i find it satisfying yes <laughs> i got this from amazon i also read a good amount of physical books i also have a collection on here it's kind of like just what i'm in the mood for or if it's like a huge book then i'll go ahead and load it up on my kindle That was so incredibly satisfying. I don't know what it is. It's just like the little things, I guess. She's ready to travel with me everywhere I go. Hello. 
below. This rooftop is so serene. It's nice seeing different parts of the city because I was so used to just like your typical Manhattan skyline view. Long Island City has its buildings that are coming up and you see older buildings around here that are still thriving, so super cool. Uh, something happened a few days ago where I just received some really upsetting news. To be honest, it really angered me. I felt really played, for a lack of a better word. I'm not gonna go into detail, but what happened was I had this opportunity. I executed everything that I was asked to do on time and very, very, very last minute, the opportunity was tabled due to like a miscount on their end. So everything was kind of out of our control. You know, I had already done the work, done everything I needed to do, which took a lot of time and effort. You know that feeling where like something's just building up and just swelling inside of you of excitement. It was kind of like, whoop, never mind, JK. My immediate response was to kind of like be desperate about the situation, which is never a good way to go about it because I'm already setting myself up to be in such a low vibration, to be the inferior person in the situation. And so I was like, is there anything else we can do? And unfortunately, we couldn't because, you know, all of the measures were out of both parties' control. I felt my face getting red and losing control of my emotions. Right at that moment, I tapped into all of my tools that I've been learning and practicing this past year or so. First thing I did was to recognize that I can't control outwardly what others decide to do or what factors outside of me come to be, but what I can control is what's inside of me. The second thing was acknowledging how I felt. By me being desperate in that situation, you know, by professionally expressing that I've already put in all the work and the time, and please understand that this wasn't a random thing that took like 10 seconds, but took a long time because I just wanted to be heard and validated for all of my effort and time. So I validated my own work. And that's really all that matters. I knew how much time I put into it. I knew how much work I put into it. And for that, I can be proud of myself. It feels nice to see yourself, to meet yourself. Growing up, I didn't really have the kind of healthy coping mechanisms that is ideal. <laughs> but that's no one's fault. And so I was just there for myself. And then it just came to me that what is meant for me won't pass me by. That has been true for everything in hindsight because all the opportunity that has come upon me, despite the ones that have knocked itself off the table, have led me into this oddly unique path that I'm on that I wouldn't trade for the world. It wasn't like I instantly felt better, obviously, but having tools in your emotional toolbox is so helpful. Now I understand why it's so important to really tap into like these self-help things you know something i used to look at that was so corny and cringy and like ah uh, so woo woo if you actually take your time to learn it and apply it life becomes so much more experiential as opposed to this perspective where everything feels like you're the victim for that i'm thankful anyway <laughs> just wanted to share that in case i don't know anybody has been disappointed lately i feel like disappointment is a very human emotion and sometimes we try not to set expectations but they're just there and it's okay to sit with everything and move on from it and learn from it all right i'm gonna enjoy this little sunset and take it slow i've been feeling so anxious because i feel like i'm running out of time but i'm not running out of time <sighs> Let's all give ourselves a big hug. Hug yourself like you are hugging someone that you love dearly and squeeze them. That was something that my yoga teacher told us in class and that just kind of like, ugh, that hit home. We really gotta love ourselves like how we love our loved ones and not feel any type of way about it. Not feel like you're being self-indulgent or like selfish. Okay, this is going on for too long. I will organize my thoughts and put it into the next video. Bye.